seem anywhere. Programs? Oh, oh two, yes. please. One here. Thanks, Bell. It's quite a turnout down below. Mm. Old Palmer's music had better be good. Warren Skyer would hardly be dancing the leading role if it wasn't. 
Borrow who? Who exactly is Borenskaya? Since you've stood in a queue for six hours waiting to see her dance, I should have thought Not you might... Not to see anybody. To hear. Have you ever heard of Professor Palmer? Never. Never. You will. The program says, The Heart of Fire, music by Andrew Palmer. Our professor at the Academy. So, Borrow, what's the name? It better be good. She's hardly likely to be anything else. Forget it. That's it. Your rhapsody. That's the maestoso to it. Must be an accident. Did you show him your rhapsody? Of course, I showed all my work. You don't think that he lifted it? Of course not. Shh. Vicky, Lermontov's coming. I say, that's yours too, isn't it? Yes.
Please, do mind. So we meet the great man at last. Well, I never imagined I should succeed in getting you here. I think I must be a very clever woman. If some fat harridan is going to sing, I must go. I can't bear amateurs. Neither, as it happens, can Lady Nest. What do you mean? She has, I believe, a niece who dances professionally. Hello, Professor. Now, please don't get up, Mr. Lermont. Now, are you prepared for a surprise? Do you mean a surprise, Lady Ness, nor a shock? Well, to take the plunge, I've asked my niece to dance for us tonight. What would you call that? A shock. <laughs> well, you're, you're certainly very candid. You know, Mr. Lermontov, I wouldn't dream of boring you with the performance of an amateur. My niece has been dancing leading roles for some time now. The critics think very highly of her work. How would you define ballet, Lady Neston? Well... <laughs> One might call it the poetry of motion, perhaps, or... One might, but for me it is a great deal more. For me it is a religion. And one doesn't really care to see one's religion practiced in an atmosphere such as this. I hope you understand. Attractive brute. Champagne cocktail, please. Yes, sir. Champagne cocktail, please. Yes, madam. Do you know, at parties, everybody's supposed to be very happy. But perhaps you dislike them as much as I do. Still, as far as go, I think it might have been worse. Do you? It very nearly was a great deal worse. We were, it appears, to be treated to a little dancing exhibition. But now I understand where to be spared that horror. Mr. Lermontov, I am that horror. Hmm. <laughs> it's a bit late for apologies, isn't it? Yes, a little late, I think. Well, the same, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. But you're not sorry I didn't dance, are you? Oh. May I ask why? Well, because, my dear Miss Simmons. Victoria Page. My dear Miss Page, if I accept an invitation to a party, I do not expect to find myself at an audition. Yes, you're quite right. Why do you want to dance? Why do you want to live? Well, I don't know exactly why, but uh, I must. That's my answer, too. Come with me. Where to? We are going to have a little talk. But I don't think I want to talk to you. Don't you worry, I'll do the talking.
Shall I see Mr. Lamont yes. now, please? What is it, Dimitri? Oh, it is a young man called Craster. He has been here a hundred times, and a hundred times I have told him you are asleep. But he will not believe me. Then either you are a very bad liar, or Mr. Craster is a young man of good sense. Show him in and serve breakfast. Mr. Craster. What can I do for you, Mr. Craster? I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Lermontov, but it's a matter of very great importance to me. Yes? Last night I wrote you a letter. It was a silly letter, and I'd like to have it back before you read it, please. I see. That's the one. Unfortunately, Mr. Cross, I have already read this letter. Oh. Mr. Lamontov, please. You are one of Professor Palmer's pupils. You say you've written a string quartet and a piano concerto. Yes. Very interesting. Mm, would you care to play me something? Or something of your own, I mean. Of course, if you, if you wish it. This is a study I wrote for the piano. But I'm thinking of orchestrating it and putting it into an opera I'm working on. finished already. It was very interesting. Hope I haven't ruined your breakfast. By the way, I need a new coach for the orchestra. Would the idea interest you? Would it interest? Well, I shouldn't be able to pay much money first, of course. Eight pounds a week and expenses. Absolutely marvelous. Right. Then get yourself some breakfast and come over to Covent Garden. Thank you. And your letter, Mr. Craster. If you take my advice, you destroy it immediately and forget all about it. The heart of fire is your work, isn't it? You see, Mr. Krauser, these things mostly happen unintentionally. Well, I know, that's why... That's why it is worth remembering that it is much more disheartening to have to steal than to be stolen from. Hmm? Good morning. I tried to get it, tried to get it twice. Ta da. Here, yeah, son. Okay. Oi, you'll pardon me. This is the way to the stage, isn't it? Name? Julian Craster. What name? Julian Craster. Not on the list. Nancy Rina? Yes. 
but I have an appointment with Mr. Lawrence. Now, look, I'm Lawrence. sorry, but I've got my job well, to look, it's not likely you know, to ask me to come and get see me. Good morning, George. Oh, bonjour, madame. How is Madame George? Oh, she's la très jalouse. Very jalouse. It's that bit of a photograph we had took together, compre? Oh, here. You know, they've been looking all over London for you this morning. Ah, oh, flute. That's what I said. Look, how much longer do you expect me to go on waiting I'll here? I'll send for the SM. What is your name, young man? Uh, Julian Craster. I have an appointment with Mr. Lamontot. Julian Quest? Quest? Uh, Craster. Quest? Well, George, if this young man is invited by Mr. Lamontot, you can pass him, yes? Ça va by me, madame. Ça va by me. Follow of me, young man. Jessica Ward. Come on. Are you a dancer? Yes. At night. Not very much in the morning. I'm afraid I don't know very much about ballet. You are artist? Yes. I'm a composer. Ah. And you wish to see who? Well, I'm afraid I'm not quite sure. They are all there. Make your choice. Excuse me, can you tell me who's in charge here? No idea, mate. There's about five or six of them that thinks they are. Excuse me, can you tell oh, me who's in charge here? Don't ask me anything, young man. I'm just somebody's mother, and that doesn't mean much around here, I can tell you. Can you tell me who's in charge here? In charge of what? Uh, Mr. Learmont, I've asked me to come here this morning. Why? He's engaged me. Not as a dancer, I hope. No. Hello, mes enfants. Au boulot. And... Well, Mr. Landoff, Mr. Lubov wants it moved. It is on the plan, and there it stays. Well, if you say so. Merci. One minute. Ah, here comes the great Boronskaya. At last. And today she's only 43 minutes late. Am I supposed to congratulate myself on that? I tell you, Irina, my patience is at an end. This time I shall go to Lermontov and I shall explain to him how no theater is big enough to hold both you and me. I might as well start packing. Oh, there is no hurry after all. He might choose to dispense with my services. He is quite crazy enough. But if we go, we go together, Krisha, darling. Promise? Good, Kuska. Hey. Who are you? Victoria Page. I expect Mr. Lermontov has spoken to you about me. He's invited me to come here. No, this is too much. He invites them, I teach them. I get rid of them, he forgets them. And now, unhappy girl, will you please go to the far corner of the stage where you'll meet five other young ladies to whom Mr. Lermontov has also extended his hospitality. Jackie! I want to rehearse the first act of Heart of Fire. Will everybody not concerned leave the stage, please? I know, boys. Set act one. Harry. Is that so? Well, I agree. Where are you going, my dear? I'm going to talk to Mr. Lermont. Oh, don't you think it would be better to wait until after the rehearsal? Oh, no, that's all right. You see, I know him personally. Oh, well, that makes all the difference, of course. Rado. Yes, Boris? Oh, stay where you are. I'll come up. Good morning, Mr. Lermontov. Good morning, Rada. Right. Look here, we must do something about this foreground piece here. The girls last night had hardly room to move. Lubov was right, after all. Aha, Lubov! Lubov is always right, we know. Do, do you really think so? Yes. Well, well, well. Take it away. Take it away.
Well, you see, my dear Mr. Lermontov is a very busy man. Now, why don't you go and wait over there with the others? Ivan, are you ready? Yes. Yes, I will. Mr. Sergei Sergeyevich. Yes. Uh, are you acquainted with either the works or person of Julian Craster, composer and conductor? No. Nor I. Which proves, my dear fellow, how sadly we lag behind the times. For here he is in our midst. <gasps> the Lermontov has engaged him this morning. No, gentlemen, figure 29, sing. I think that will do. Thank you, gentlemen. The brass could do with your attention, Crasta. Tomorrow. I'm very sorry to bring you here so early in the morning. But I've been in front for this particular ballet on more than one occasion, and I really must... One or two things I really must put right. So, um, Heart of Fire, Overture, please. From the beginning. Oh, by the way, trumpets. Two bars before figure two. Have you got an E natural? No, I've got an E flat. Ah, makes all the difference, doesn't it? Should be E natural. Right, from the beginning. I know it's difficult to get your lips set at this time in the morning, but still, we ought to be able to come in together, you know. And um, even more pianissimo, less strings, A over. From the beginning, please. What is going on? I can only suppose that you've taken leave of your senses. Do you realize that by calling the orchestra one hour early that we should have to pay them? <laughs> but why are you rehearsing Heart of Fire? Did I ever ask you to do that? But tell me, I'm interested. Well, uh, I'm sure that Mr. Lermontov will be interested too. Well, I like it. You like it? I've no doubt you also like the national anthem and the Marseillaise. I hope you're not thinking of summoning the full orchestra at dawn to practice those noble melodies. <laughs> well, I leave this young man to you, Lermontov. 
Now, after all, he is your discovery, not mine. Mr. Krast, I must ask you to exercise in future a little more control over your natural ambitions. And why you should have chosen Heart of Fire for this early morning escapade, good morning, gentlemen, good morning. is a mystery that I shall never hope to solve. And may I see that wrong note in the score, please? Hmm. However, there are passages in Heart of Fire which no one need be ashamed of. Thank you, Mr. Lamont. Good morning, Miss Page. Oh, good morning, Evan. Is Lord Odom with you? Yes, Miss. Be careful, Miss. Good morning, Peter. Well, hello, Vicky. What are you doing here? What are you? I'm having lunch with Boris Lermontov. You know, the fellow who runs the ballet here. Oh. Business or pleasure? Oh, a bit of both. What about you? Shopping or slumming? Now, don't you worry, Grisha. I'll bring her back at three o'clock. How are you, madame? How are you? Hello, Peter. I hope we haven't kept you waiting. No, not at all. Oh, Boris, I don't think you met a friend of mine, Vicky Page. How do you do? Can we give you a lift anywhere? No, thank you, Peter. Excuse me, Miss Page. Who? Victoria Page? Um, yes. She made us. young ladies. I hope I find you all very well this morning. There are just one or two things I would like to say to you today. As you know, the belly is leaving the Saturday for Paris. Now, I can't imagine anything more enchanting than being able to invite you, all of you, to accompany us there, but I'm afraid this great pleasure must be denied me. To those whom we must regretfully leave behind, I'd like to say just this, please. Don't be discouraged. The fact that we can't take you with us doesn't mean that you're bad dancers. It just means that this year, unfortunately, we haven't got enough room. Now, would you please step out, Miss Fane, and you, Miss Baines, and you, Miss Hardiman, and Miss Lowman, please. Yes. And may I thank you four ladies very much for the hard work you've done this year. And I'm sure my gratitude is equity by Mr. Lyubov. Mm. Yes, and maybe next year we shall be meeting you again. Good morning. Vicky, he means...
means us. Un ange, des entrechats, gars, comme ça. Oh, elle touchait pas la terre. Sans blague. Ouais. All my love and best wishes for your happiness. Irina, my little horror, I wish you the greatest happiness with your new partner. Merci, Ivan. Krisha, where is Krisha? I'm oh. here, Irina. Krisha, darling, do you hate me? I could never hate you, Irina, but how can I ever forgive you? Ah, mon petit, you will forgive me, that I know. <laughs> well, don't quarrel with your poor husband as much as you quarrel with your conductor. But where is Boris Lemotov? He has nothing to say to me. Boris! He has no heart, that man. Mr. Craster, I have a job for you. Good. Do I understand you have not been altogether very happy with us so far? Well, I... Well, what? Well, coaching an orchestra is not exactly a young composer's dream, is it? I'm afraid the job I have for you may not be exactly a young composer's dream either. All the same, I hope you do not consider it entirely unworthy of your talent. The belly of the red shoes is from a fairy tale by Hansas. I beg your pardon. The belly of the red shoes is from a fairy tale by Hans Andersen. It is the story of a girl who is devoured by an ambition to attend a dance in a pair of red shoes. She gets the shoes, goes to the dance, and first all was well and she's very happy. At the end of the evening she gets tired and wants to go home. But the red shoes are not tired. In fact, the red shoes are never tired. They dance her out into the streets they dance over the mountains and valleys, through fields and forests, through night and day. Time rushes by, love rushes by. 
life rushes by. But the red shoes dance on. What happens in the end? Oh, and then she dies? Yes, I remember. The music was written by Felipe Bertrand. He did it for us last year during our South American tour. You'll find here some passages marked with a blue pencil. They are bad. Now I would like to see, Mr. Craster, what you can do in the way of a little uh, rewriting. Oh. oh, you can take your time. There's no hurry. Thank you. On vous attend sur la scène, Monsieur Lermontov. Oui, je viens. She's in wonderful form tonight. I'm not interested in Boronska's form anymore. Nor in the form of any other prima ballerina who is imbecile enough to get married. Oh, come now, but... She's out. Finished. You cannot have it both ways. The dancer who relies upon the doubtful comforts of human love will never be a great dancer. Never. That is all very fine, Boris, very pure and fine, but you can't alter human nature. No. I think you can do even better than that. You can ignore it. <laughs> Alors, qui t'as entendu, hein Vous donnerez à boire à tout le monde avec les compliments de Monsieur Lubov. Moi, je suis Lubov. Boris. Adieu. Well, Irina. Now you'll be able to sleep as long as you like and eat sweets all day and go to parties every night. And you, now you will be calm. The class will start on time. No more shouting, no more hysteria backstage, no more. No more, Irina. <laughs> <laughs> de régler le nouveau dispositif de lumière. Il est au point. Oh, Monsieur Lermontov, cette histoire de bon Miss Page? Are you very tired? Yes, thank you. I mean, I'm not very tired. Monsieur, je vous présente Miss Victoria Page qui vient de nous joindre. Monsieur Boudin, le directeur général de l'Opéra. Mes hommages, mademoiselle. Monsieur Rideau, le régisseur. Enchanté, mademoiselle. You have already visited Monte Carlo, mademoiselle. Yes, I was here last season with my aunt. Oh, then you know the Hotel de Paris, mademoiselle. Yes, but I believe I'm still... Hotel de Paris. You'll be very comfortable there. La voiture de Monsieur Lermontov vous attend, Miss Page. Bonsoir, mademoiselle.
santé, mademoiselle. You look dressed up for a conference. Hello. Is there a conference on? Yes, they're all arguing in there. I've been here since seven. Oh, there you are, Miss Page. Would you come in here, please? I was just going out, Mr. Lermontov, when I got your message. Miss Page, I've asked you to come here tonight because we are preparing a new ballet and I've decided to give you a chance and let you dance the principal part in it. But there's one thing I must tell you at once. My belief in your possibilities is not shared by my colleagues here. However, it is hardly necessary for me to add that whatever their personal belief may be, they will all give you their best. The rest, of course, is up to you. Well, Miss Page, that's all. We shall start work early tomorrow morning. I suggest you now forget all about your party and go straight home to bed. Yes, I will. And Miss Page? Good luck. Thank you. Well, what happened? I've got a part in a new ballet. A new ballet? What ballet? The Red Shoes. Now listen to this, Mr. Cross. It is impossible. Well, I couldn't rewrite that bit, could I? Why not? You didn't brew pencil it. Horrors like that don't need to be brew pencil. They speak for themselves. Well, as a matter of fact, I did have some ideas about that. Where are they, my dear fellow? We need a score. If you'll allow me. Well, it's the church scene. Let's get rid of this sentimental hymn tune and take a four-square chorale. Something like this. I thought all the way through we might have a church bell coming in. All this on the strings. Then as the priest appears, it's taken up with the brass. Shall I play you the dance of the red shoes? Thank you, Mr. Krasner. Thank you. This time I wanted to change everything. I want a new score. There you are, Mr. Lamontop. And where's the orchestration? When do you want it? Yesterday. 
Well, you said you wanted to work, didn't you? Then go home and work. I don't want to see your face anywhere until you finished it. You won't. Why aren't you in bed? Oh, you gave me quite a fright. I meant to. Why aren't you in bed? I was ordered to, but I was much too excited to sleep, so here I am. Are you? I haven't seen you. Thank you. By the way, you haven't seen me either. Has he sent you to bed too? <laughs> no. I'm just working on the score of my new ballet, The Red Shoes. Is that my ballet, too? Yes, I suppose it is. I wonder what it feels like to wake up in the morning and find oneself famous. You're not likely to know if you stay here talking much longer. <laughs> So, good luck. Good luck. She's putting too much into it. Why don't you tell her, Grisha? Mind your own business. She has the dance with me and the dance at the fair before this. And the big stuff still to come. She can't dance everything for nothing. She ought to know that. How do you expect her to know it, Ivan Ivanovich? If you never once dance for out yourself before the opening night. Designs for the costumes, Boris. One moment, sir. Sit down, will you please? I'm so sorry, Mr. Lubov. Something will have to be done about the music. She starts the pirouette a beat too early. Mm. The tempo's wrong. It's too fast. It's the right tempo. Of course. Once more. She'll be all right. I hope so. <laughs> Still unconverted, Sergei? Well, of course, she's a charming girl, but... Oh, I know nothing about her charms and her careless. But I tell you, they won't wait till the end. They applaud in the middle. Oh, oh, oh come now. Sergei, Promise. I take a bet. Oh, enough, enough. Miss Page, we are trying to create something of beauty. Might I suggest that while you continue to wave your arms like a scarecrow and bend your knees like an old cow horse, we are unlikely to succeed. Well, well, it's a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let me see your sketches. The girl. Christian. Dejeuner. Rendez-vous à deux heures. Ne fais pas attention, mon petit. Ce Lubov est un animal. Un verre d'eau, s'il vous plaît. Bien, vous l'aurez dans une seconde. Do you still think I can do it? <laughs> Well, at the moment, you look as if you were finding it a little difficult. 
Now, when we open in two weeks' time, I hope you'll appear to be finding the whole thing supreme, simple. <laughs> and don't forget, the great impression of simplicity can only be achieved by a great agony of body and spirit. Voila. Uh, 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 uh. You don't want to ruin your breathing, do you? And from today, I've arranged that you shall have your lunch in my office. Krasta. Now, will you sit over there, please? Merci. Mr. Krasta, at the piano. Do you usually have a musical accompaniment to your meals, Mr. Lermontov? <laughs> no, Miss Page, I do not. But I'm afraid this is going to be your fate for the next two weeks. Mr. Krauss is going to play the Red Shoes music for you at every lunch, tea, and dinner you take until we open. I see. Yes. In this way, you should become quite familiar with the music. Yes, I think I probably shall. The music is all that matters. Nothing but the music. Huh? Mr. Krauss, then? Certainly. Bon appétit. What is the service, brother? Composers specialize in lunchtime music, don't they? Some. You? In my time. Look, do you mind not playing that just for a moment, please? It's the right tempo. Let's take the ballroom scene. That's the most digestible part of the score. The ballroom's out. It's been cut. Cut as a scene, but it's still there in my score. I wrote this dance for a ballroom. Anyone who understands anything about music will see a ballroom. Even Lermontov will see a ballroom. Even you. And when you're lifted up into the air by your partner, my music will transform you. Into what? A flower swaying in the wind. A cloud drifting in the sky. A white bird flying. Tell that to Rato. He would love your birds and flowers. You don't. If you were a dancer, you'd know that Just nothing matters. Just a minute. Matters. Nothing matters but the music. <laughs> and it's hard enough to get off the ground anyway, without being a bird or a flower. Aren't you going to imagine anything on the first night? Yes, a war between me and the audience. My music will pull you through it. circus conductor and you are not a horse. It's too fast. You would not find oh, it would too fast. Canceled. Both of you. You would not find it too fast if you would allow the slow passage to come to an end before you start your pirouette. My downbeat marks a pause. We understand it, don't we, gentlemen? N'est-ce pas? You come in on the second beat. Impossible. One, two. Tia, tia. It's quite simple. You see this pattern? Yes. Well, follow it.
Good luck. Good luck. Vicky. Vicky. Dance whatever tempo you like. I'll follow you. All right, Ivan. Oh. Time to go down, Cresta. Good luck, Mr. Cresta. Thank you, Mr. Lamelton. Nervous? No. Come on. What the devil have you got to worry about? It's a fine score. Is it? A magnificent score. I only wish I... Go on. Best of luck, Miss Page. I can't even remember my first entrance. Oh, you mean you think you can't remember it? What about this? Yes, that's it. It's all right when I hear the music. Since you're undoubtedly going to hear the music, it's undoubtedly going to be all right. The music is all that matters, and nothing but the music. If I had any doubts about you at all, I should be nervous. Am I nervous? No. Oh, you're not dancing for an audience. You're dancing with a loop of rat of myself, people for whom you've been dancing many times before. I believed in you from the very beginning. But now, everybody dances. I want you to dance tonight with the same ecstasy I've seen in you only once before. At the Mercury Theatre? Yes, at the Mercury Theatre in London, on a wet Saturday afternoon. Forty seconds. Come. Good luck, my dear. You're a magician, Boris, to have produced all this in three weeks and from nothing. My dear Livy, not even the best magician in the world can produce a rabbit out of a hat if there isn't a red rabbit in the hat. <laughs> There only holds 300. We could have filled the Albert Hall tonight. Yes, but what we are creating tonight, the whole world will be talking of tomorrow morning. Good boy. Rido!
Ça va? Any swelling? I mean the head. All that clapping, bravos, roses, poof, all that's nothing. But when I, who have seen Pavlova Karsavina dance, tell you that last night you were not bad, not good, but not bad, that's something. Now I tell you the truth. It was good. Thank you, Mr. Lubo. My name is Grisha. Mine is Vicky. How do you do? Arms later. So, Boris Lermontov wants to see you. Why in class time? Why? Je vous en prie. No, 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 it's fine. Thank you so much for ringing me. You're not disturbing me at all. I always have time for congratulations. Mr. Lermontov. Laissez-moi parler, je vous en prie. Vous voyez que je téléphone, hein? Oh, yes, I agree. Music is introuvable. Monsieur Lermontov. A most distinguished score. Je voudrais juste savoir le nom du compositeur. Mais voilà, Monsieur Craster, tout le monde. Ah, Monsieur Craster? Oui, yes, oh, of course, it's on the counter to me. Yes, he's going to. He's starting on a new ballet. Right away. Full of gaiety and charm. La belle manière, book by Marcel Lucien. Yes. Oh, yes, it's a wonderful roof. Of course. Au revoir, chère madame, au revoir. No, not this season, next season. Cher maître, je voudrais vous souhaiter beaucoup. Au revoir, chère monsieur. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Yes, it's very kind of you to ring me. Thank you so much, again. Thank you very much. No more calls, not even congratulations. Mon cher ami, je vous en remercie beaucoup. N'oubliez pas ce que je vous ai dit, hein? Au revoir. Where the Paris papers? Thank you very much, yeah. Ah, oh, fichez-moi le corps, je vous en prie. Excusez-moi. Well, Mr. Craster, that's all. Thank you very much. I'm proud of you. Mr. Lamotov, I would like to... Uh, some other time, some other time, Mr. Craster. I beg of you. Ah, yes, yes, I beg of you. Do you read French? Yes. Well, read it and we'll have a talk about it some other time, huh? Mademoiselle Page. Come in, Miss Page, come in. Sit down. I want to talk to you about your future. When we first met at Lady Neston, you asked me a question to which I gave a stupid answer. You asked me whether I wanted to live, and I said yes. Actually, Miss Page, I want more, much more. I want to create, to make something big out of something little. To make a great dancer out of you. But first, I must ask you the same question. What do you want from life? To live? To dance. We have two months left of the season in Monte Carlo. Not much time, but enough. Two months. Then we go on tour. Rome, Vienna, Copenhagen, Stockholm. Then America. Then next year, London again. All the big parts for you. Coppelia, Lac de Singe, Giselle, Sleeping Princess, Les Sylphides, La Boutique. We create them all afresh with you. You shall dance. And the world shall follow. You shall... Psh, not the world. I will do the talking. You will do the dancing. <laughs> Raison, mais c'est inouï. Et toujours Victoria Page. Ah, oh, Victoria Page. Vous avez là une vedette de premier ordre, Lermontov. De premier ordre. Good night, Boris. Good night, Grisha. She was not bad tonight. She'll be all right. All right? Not bad. But she's a flame. A spirit coryphée. <laughs> Still not enough, Grisha. 
Good night, Boris. Good night, Sergei. Oh, Vicky was wonderful in boutique. <laughs> Just a little Dresden shepherdess. We should reconstruct the theater. What's wrong with the theater? It's too small. Good night, Armando. Good night, Livy. Her timing's a miracle. Keep up to it. Trisha. Good night, Boris. Good night, Sergei. Good night, Mr. Lermontov. Good night, Vicky. Good night, Boris. Good night, Sergei. Uh, thank you, Mr. Boudin. That's all. Good night, Boris. Good night, Grisha. Boudin. Oui? Tell me, uh, which is esteemed to be the very best restaurant this year on the coast? Uh, La Réserve. Oui, oui, La Réserve. Good night, Leomantov. Uh, good night, Levy. Put me a table. For two? Non, il est parti il y a cinq minutes exactement. Au revoir. Bonsoir, monsieur. Julian. Yes? I never said good night to Lermontov. Monsieur Dimitri? Uh, no, Miss Page has still not come in. Monsieur Ratov? Uh, not here either. Monsieur Lyubov? Uh, 317. No. Mais tu sais bien qu'ils sont tous à la Villefranche, voyons. Ah, oh, monsieur Dimitri, I have just heard. They've all gone to supper at the old port at Villefranche with monsieur Lyubov. C'est son anniversaire, his birthday. Cher maître, avec tous les vœux du théâtre municipal du casino de Monte Carlo. Ah, oh, merci. Oui, touché. Regardez-moi ça. Quel merveilleux quai. Tiens. 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 Paris Lermontov. Oh, oh, ça c'est Good evening, Grisha. Am I permitted to join your party? Que bien, chérie. What a pleasure, Paris. Que joy. A chair for Paris Lermont. Two chairs for Paris Lermont.
front of Make way there, and throws. Throw to the right, Boris Lansky. Take mine, Leo. No, no, take mine. Oh, you sit down as your birthday. Sit down. Well, seems a long time since I sat down to supper with my entire family. Thank you. But it appears that the great Miss Page is not with us tonight. Don't you miss another member of our happy little family? No. No, I can't say I do. Why should you? You're a busy man. Have a drink, Leopold. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Richard. Yes, of course, we all know you're a busy man, Boris Lemonto. But do you mean to tell me you have noticed nothing? Well, don't exaggerate. Boris, we have a little romance in our midst. A great romance. Uh -huh. <laughs> Romeo Custer. And Juliet Page. And when did this great romance begin? With the red shoes. And where have they taken themselves tonight? What does it matter? Where they have gone? They are young, they are together, and they are in love. Wake up. But I want to know where we are. Koshe. Car. One day when I'm old. I want some lovely young girl to say to me, tell me where in your long life, Mr. Craster, were you most happy? And I shall say, well, my dear, I never knew the exact place. It was somewhere on the Mediterranean. I was with Victoria Page. What, she will say, do you mean the famous dancer? I will nod. Yes, my dear, I do. But then she was quite young. Comparatively unspoiled. We were, I remember, very much in love. I suppose you'll be sending me to an Oculus next. Watch her dancing. With pleasure. Deputants. Share it to Metany.
Yes, all right, Thursday. Uh, good evening, Mr. Lamontoff. I'm afraid the score's still a bit rough, but I see you've had time to look at it. Yes, Mr. Craster. I have looked at it. However, it is not about your music that I wish to talk at the moment. So to come to the point, what is all this I hear about you and Miss Page? Oh, I see. Could Dimitri get out? Well, Mr. Craster. Yes. Where now? I see. Did you see Miss Page's performance in Lac des Signes? I was conducting. Did you enjoy it? I think it was the loveliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was impossible. And do you know why it was impossible? Because neither her mind nor her heart were in her work. She was dreaming. And dreaming is a luxury I've never permitted in my company. Miss Page wants to be a great dancer. Perhaps she has spoken to you about her ambitions. Oh, yes. She's not, however, a great dancer yet. Nor is she likely to become one if she allows herself to be sidetracked by idiotic flirtations. Mr. Lermontov, you don't understand. We really are in love. And, Mr. Craster, I have had time to look at your latest effort. Yes. And find it equally impossible. That's not true. It's good. Childish, vulgar, and completely insignificant. In that case, I'll relieve you of it. There are, of course, so many first-class belly companies to which you may take it with advantage. I don't know that it's my greatest ambition to work for the ballet. Some of us think it's rather a second-rate means of expression. Oui, Monsieur Lamontoff? Mr. Craster's leaving the company. Pay him two weeks' salary against the receipt. I was just coming to say good night. Good night. Is there anything the matter, Boris? No, no. Uh, before I forget it, don't do any more work on the new ballet. I decided to scrap it. Scrap it? What do you mean? I've worked out how the choreography already. That boy, Julian, is really gifted. It's one of the finest scores we ever had. Julian Cross is leaving the company. And I don't wish to discuss the matter any further. Oh, you don't? Well, I do. Do you think I don't know a brilliant score when I hear one? Do you think I've been working day and night for weeks for the pleasure of being told I am wasting my time? I tell you, Boris, I had enough of this fantastic, lunatic asylum. I am through with it. I resign. I think you've made a very important decision. Hello. Well, what did he say? Ah, of course, he doesn't really want you to go, Grisha. He's very sorry. Well, in that case, I will think about it. What about Julian? Yeah, I have never seen him 
quite as bad as this. He talked a great deal about ingratitude and uh, disloyalty. And he said when personal relations started to inter... Yes, I know that bit. My dear children, I'm very sorry. But this may feel different in the morning. In the morning? He's leaving for Paris by the 815 train. Has the famous Miss Page come to see me off? I'd like to talk to you. I want you to tell me why you quarreled with Julian. There's only three minutes. May I suggest, Miss Page, that such matters are hardly your business? <coughs> However, since you've gone to all this trouble, Mr. Krauss has been unwise enough to interfere with certain plans of mine. And that is something I do not permit. I thought once, Mr. Lermontov, that there would be no room in my life for anything but dancing. You will think so again, my dear. But if Julian goes, I shall go too. And what exactly do you intend to do? I shall dance somewhere else. Oh, yes. It won't be very difficult with the name I've given you. Always provided I release you of your contract. But even if I do, would it be quite the same? I have never pretended to myself that it would. I could make you one of the greatest dancers the world has ever known. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. And all that means nothing to you? You know exactly what it means to me. The train is leaving. Goodbye, Mr. Lamontoff. Page is coming. Julian! Julian! I'm coming with you!
Come in. You're late. I hope you didn't work too hard. All finished. I have the injunction with me. Boris, don't tell me you've changed your mind again. <laughs> I... I don't want to stop her doing anything. She can dance whenever she likes. Except the red shoes. And what about the boys? Oh, that's different. Everything is written while under contract to me is mine. It's in the contract. The red shoes and his work so far under Ben Menier. I'm not interested in anything else you may write. But if you keep the red shoes in the repertoire, oh. you'll have to pay him royalties. Red shoes is no longer in the repertoire. Oh. I understand uh, Patrick Trevelyan is in Paris. Yes. I dined with them both last night. Oh? Moronska is with him? Yes. Anything I can do? How's the marriage? Success? Patrick seems to think so. Would you like me to arrange a meeting with Irina? Not arrange. By chance. <laughs> Good night, Boris. Good night, Irina. Good season. Hmm. With the ballet air Montoff, always. Good night, Boris. Good night, Sergei. Sergei. Yes. Would you come in and wait a minute, please? Yes, of course, Boris. Good night, Boris. Grisha, please come in and wait. Conference. Uh. Letters. Nobody writes to me. That's not true. Yours, from Vicky. From Vicky? Mm -hmm. How is that girl? Please, that you'll see. This is from Julian. It's all about his new opera. He describes the whole structure. Enormous talent, that boy. He says... she's an inspiration. A miracle. Thank you, Mr. Boudin. That's all. Merci. Good night. Bonsoir. Well, I see it's mail day. From our two young rebels. Deserters. I hope they're happy. Read, Boris. Yes, read this too. It might make you sorry to have lost that young man. I doubt it. By the way, that reminds me, Jacques sent me the new score of La Belle Meniere. I like it, and I'd like you all to hear it at once. We might open with it in London. With Irina? We can discuss that. 
sparse lights, all gaiety, fire. Perhaps you'll be good enough to glance through it. And no prejudice, please. I have to say it to yourself sometimes. <laughs> Every day. Uh, good night, children. Good night. Good night. On second thoughts, I think I would like to read those letters. My letter was only meant to be read by me. See you later, Boris. Can I say it? I could hardly let him read it. She calls him a monster. A gifted, cruel monster. <laughs> you should have told him that.
Sorry to be late, Boris Lamontov. Lady Neston was in front tonight. She arrived this morning. She is staying for several weeks. And Miss Page is joining her next week for a short holiday. We seem to be destined to meet at the railway station. Speak, please. What are you doing in turn? Waiting for you, of course. Won't you sit down? But you know, my dear Vicky, how I'm always looking for great dancers. We all have missed you. And I was hoping that by now you would have started to miss us a little. I have. You only have to say the word. How is everybody? Including me. Including you. Never better. How is Grisha? Always fighting with Peronskaya. <laughs> and she? Always fighting with Grisha. And how is old Sergei? Getting younger. And you? Getting older. And you? You are happy? Yes, very happy. As a dance, I mean. I haven't danced very much, you know. Oh, I know, I know. I know every time you have danced. But you never stopped working. No. And you never stopped going to class. Never. And why isn't he with you? His opera's been accepted at Covent Garden. It's in rehearsal now. Would he give it up if you ask him? I don't know. You do know. I wouldn't ask him. Then why is he asking you? Does he know what he's asking? We are preparing a new ballet. We've been working at it for weeks. The costumes and the decor are the most beautiful things Rotop has ever done. Grisha's full of enthusiasm, and you know what that means. Nobody else has ever danced the red shoes since you left. Nobody else ever shall. Put on the red shoes, Vicky, and dance for us again. This is the BBC third program. I'm speaking from the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, London. Tonight is the first night of Cupid and Psyche, a new opera by a young British composer, Julian Craster, whose only well-known work until now has been the score for the ballet, The Red Shoes. The Red Shoes was a great success when produced at Monte Carlo last year with the ballet Lermontov, but has not yet been seen in this country. Oh, something must have gone wrong, I'm afraid. I think somebody's going to make an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to announce that Mr. Julian Craster, the composer, who was to conduct his own opera, has been suddenly taken ill. Sir Hartley Menges will conduct in his place. Here comes Sir Hartley Menges now. I'll announce the names of the cast during the interview. Il est moins le quart, monsieur. All the way down from London, I wondered if I'd find you here. And here you are. You left your first night? Yes. Julia. Why didn't you? Lost. All right now, my sweetheart. 
There's a train going from Paris at 8 o'clock. We'll be on it together. Better hurry up and get changed. But I'm dancing tonight. Walk out. Good evening, Mr. Craster. Won't they be missing you at Covent Garden tonight? Monsieur Lermont, en filez moins dix. Oui, je sais. Oh, for God's sake, leave me alone, both of you. Please, Julian, wait until after the performance. It'll be too late, then. You are already too late, Mr. Craster. Tell him why you've left him. I haven't left oh, him. Oh, yes, you have left him. Nobody can have two lives, and your life is dancing. Vicky, you can dance anywhere else in the whole world. Would you be satisfied with anything less than the best? If you would, you would never be a great artist. Perhaps you never will. And would you make her a great dancer as well? Never. Why do you think I've waited day after day since you sent her away from me for a chance to win her back? Because you're jealous of her. Yes, I am. But in a way that you will never understand. Leave my sack. Monsieur Lermontov, faut-il tenir le rideau? Wait. Well, Vicky? I love you, Julian. Nobody but you. <laughs> but you love that more. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if you go with him now, I will never take you back. Never. <laughs> Vicky, do you want to destroy our love? Adolescent nonsense. <laughs> All right, go then. Go with him. Be a faithful uh, housewife. The crowd of screaming children and finish with dancing forever. Vicky, look at me. Peut-on commencer l'ouverture Oui, commencez. Oh, oh, oh. Alors, dis-nous, j'ai bien fait, commencez tout de suite. Vite, vite. Vicky. Vicky. Little Vicky. There it is, all waiting for you. Sorrow will pass, believe me. Life is so unimportant. And from now onwards, you will dance like nobody ever before.
and gentlemen. I'm sorry to tell you that Miss Page is unable to dance tonight. Nor indeed any other night. <laughs> Nevertheless, we've decided to present the red shoes. It is the belly that made her name, whose name she made. We present it because we think You would have wished it. Julian. Yes, my darling. Take off the red shoes. 